I'm so happy to welcome these two guys. This guy has forgotten more about politics than most of us will ever know. How about Michael Shore, everyone? Yeah. And he's joined by the longtime ABC News correspondent, the senior correspondent at ABC News for so long. Covered the White House for so long. How about it for Jim Avila? Wow, look at you, Jim Avila. You uh, out of the um, out of the the uh, the health situation you were in and back into real life. <laughs> yeah. I like yeah, it. Yeah, it's good to be back. Yeah, very, very I mean, cool. I don't, well, I don't know if I'm alone here, but I missed the headshot. I gotta say. Yeah, the headshot was pretty <laughs> sweet. Yeah. It is it is a sweet headshot. It was like some, <laughs> I think you used I send you several of them, but uh, you, you used the oldest one, which is great. Yeah. It makes you look like I was uh, fifty again. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, look at you. There you are. Hey, by the way, Albert, uh, this is great. Commissioner, can I ask you to, I don't know if you have this information handy, but both Jim Avila and Michael Shore are playing Mark's Madness. They both did brackets, didn't they? They do. Here's their updated no. standings. Here we go. Oh, there this it is. for is. the Friday people. Oh, look so at that. Snyder, Snyder's up for the Friday guests, and then Avila yeah, and Shore did tied at eight and four so far. Wow. Eight yeah. wins, that four losses. That was a tough losses. UCLA loss last night, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you've had a you've had a rough twenty four hours, Jim Avila, with uh, UCLA. Yeah, um, they shouldn't have any twenty five year olds playing for Gonzaga anymore, Jim. So I agree with you. Yeah, they have a guy playing. So <laughs> anyway, just you're not watching on YouTube. It's uh, these are all our Friday contributors. Michael Snyder's ahead with uh, only having lost three rounds. Jim oh, Avila four, yeah. and Michael Shore four as well. Yeah, uh, but there's still, I mean. There's still plenty of time. I don't have a chance. We're coming for Snyder. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, uh, Albert's right about that. There's a Gonzaga player where isn't I mean, he's like what 28 30? or something? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Is that didn't he? For me? Didn't he? What did he? What did he say, Albert? In the uh, I wasn't sure post- if it was him or another player I was watching, but it was in a press conference, and he thanked. He actually thanked his wife. He's like, I like to thank my wife for always being there for me. <laughs> this is and my four kids. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, what a surprise. The NCAA isn't completely on the up and up. But um, it's t- you know what's amazing? Uh, just last thing, and then we'll move on to politics, is to see these insanely talented players in the NCAA tournament. I mean, remarkable ball handlers, shooters. I mean, just tremendous. And they're, many of them, most of them, won't make it to the NBA, right? It's just yeah. they're, they're not big enough or whatever it is, right? Yeah, it's yeah. a different game. Too. No, it is uh, a different. Game. That's the thing. And you know, Virginia won the national championship in 2019. That's right. Virginia won the national championship in 2019. And and uh, you know, one of the guys on that team, a few of them went pro, but only one of them is a standout. And they won the national ch- championship. And uh, I see. one of them is out of the league now, and one of them is kind of hanging on by a thread. So. Virginia was your school. Is that why you repeated it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, now obviously I'm a Furman fan because Furman beat us in the first round. <laughs> An alumnus of uh, Virginia, Michael Shore. Avila Stanford, by the way, I believe. Didn't you uh, have a... Yeah, I did not graduate. No. So, I mean, I went there, but I... Well, I you didn't graduate because else. you decided to go play baseball, I think. Something like that, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. not because you, you know, you didn't baseball. flunk out or anything. Okay. Um, Giant. No, but I never went back. <laughs> Well, you're lovely and self-effacing in your own way, but you know the truth is you were you know you were too smart for Stanford, is the way I like to think of it. Self-effacing is a <laughs> dangerous. Uh, all right, let's um, let's talk about things that you oftentimes lean in on, um, and that is uh, the Trump poll numbers, which seem to be helped by all of this controversy around the Manhattan DA. He is uh, front and center news night after night. Uh, you know everybody wants to either opine on Trump, get your reaction to what Trump is doing. Kim had a story about how he's really, if he's not explicitly calling for violence, he's uh, he's hinting at it pretty strongly. Uh, how do you break this all down politically, Jim Avila? Well, first of all, yes, the poll numbers were had a little bump, but I remind you that 40% is not gonna win any election in this country. It may win the primary. Is what it was. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it will not win the election, and that will go down once he's indicted in several places. It appears. Uh, so I don't don't get a, don't get panicked about his bump in numbers. These are 
Republican crazies who will stay with him no matter what happens. Like he said, he can shoot somebody in the middle of Fifth Avenue and his core base will stay with him. That's the case. That will, He will not win another general election. It just will not happen. Um, so don't get panicked about that. What he's doing now is, again, turning off more and more independence by threatening the DA of uh, New York City, of New York, uh, of New York. And he's threatening, uh, trying to stir up the crowds again, just like he did for January 6th. That is not popular among general Americans, uh, among the crazy people who have supported him all along. You, you know, you just have to write those folks off. And I have. I don't argue with them on Facebook or Twitter. I don't talk to them. I don't acknowledge them. They are not worth it. They're not going to change their minds. Stop wasting energy on them. Don't worry about that. Um, you know, the only danger, in my opinion, for the Democrats at this point is if Joe Biden suffers a stroke, if there's some me a medical issue with Joe Biden, then I think you're going to have you you it opens it up for if not Trump, I still don't think I think I think Biden would beat him in a in a coma, uh, but anybody else would have a chance. So you know that would be a problem, uh, but otherwise, don't panic. Uh, Michael, you share that general take on things? I mean, I do share it, uh, you know, generally. Yes, I do share it. Well, you know, I, I also think that these polls, whether Trump is going to do well or not, these, these polls this early are clearly about name recognition. They've never been about much else, and they don't really matter, and precedent says they don't matter. So you see the people with the highest name recognition from Trump to DeSantis, whose name recognition has gone up, doing well. And Mark, I don't know if you have the poll in front of you, but I, I'm, if you do, I'd love to know in that poll what the don't know or undecided number is, uh, because that to me matters more than any of these numbers. Um, oh, I see, yeah, I, yeah. Get, um, I do have it in front of me. There's a very um, good chance. Go ahead. There's yep. a very good chance that that somebody we're not even talking about right now will be yeah, the Republican. That's I mean. Well, exactly. that's what Michael Shore always you, you make yeah. this point, and you're you're right, Michael. It's just a, it's a long way off, I guess. But let's like say that don't know or undecideds if you don't have. They're 23 percent is yeah. the number. That's 23 percent. Well, so 23 percent is a huge number, and what that says to me is uh, the Trump people, as Jim has said, are already in bed with Trump, and there's nobody who is a Trump supporter who says, I don't know, or I'm undecided. If you are a Trump supporter, you are a Trump supporter, done. So what that tells me is that there are people who are still looking for that other candidate, but if there is one other candidate who's going to face Trump, that 23%, the lion's share of that is either gonna go to no one, or it's gonna go to whoever that other candidate is if you believe this poll. Uh, that to me is the most telling number in these things. Look, I, I, it's a voter who says, I haven't made up my mind, but I know it's not gonna be Donald Trump. And that's and interesting. That, yeah. and, and that's how I read these numbers. And I, I mean, look, this is, a, um, this is a high quality poll, the Mammoth poll. I mean, that's, it gets an A rating as a poll. So, uh, but again, it's a question of still, uh, it's believability may depend on uh, other things. I mean, you know, polls can, even good polls can be deceiving. Trump's at 41%. That's well, a snapshot in time. That's yeah. right now. Yeah. Exactly. Which it's March kind of, of 2023. Yeah. The president yeah. hasn't even announced that he's running again. I mean, the, these numbers are so young. And I, I so I, I don't think it's, you know, again, it's fun. I like it. I read it, obviously, but I, I only put so much, um, you know, uh, into these. If Biden did have a stroke, if something happened to Joe Biden, uh, are the Democrats legit vulnerable in the general election? I mean, the answer is the Democrats are vulnerable even if Biden doesn't have a stroke. So certainly they would be more vulnerable, uh, but there are intangibles that you can't see. If there's a lot of sympathy for what's going on in the Democratic Party or with the people that would, would otherwise be the standard bearers uh, if Biden were incapacitated, 
then the, then you don't even know how to play that, right? I mean, you, you, there, there's all sorts of ways of looking at it. What it will be, it will not just be given to Kamala Harris. In fact, it would make her a candidate, and I didn't think she would be even if Biden doesn't run. But but I, it would make her a candidate because she would be the de facto president in this fantasy that we're talking about. Um, and, and then it would be a spirited primary that could actually put more attention onto the Democrats, which could help them, I, you know. Let, let's not root for anything like that. And I, my prediction may be wrong. It could doom them. But I, I think that, you know, it, the dynamic would be so fluid at that point that it's hard to predict. Yeah, there's so many factors, I think. First of all, whether or not Trump wins the primary, okay? Uh, if it's another candidate, maybe even DeSantis, although he's already stepped on himself with the Ukraine comments. But if it's another candidate versus not Biden in the general election, then the Republicans have a have a decent chance because then the anti-Trump vote goes away. You know, the anti-crazy vote of the of the independents, independents who sometimes lean toward Republicans because they believe in, in they think we're spending too much money. So that right. might that might help the Democrat uh, might help the Republicans. So if Biden does go away in some way, if he doesn't run or if he has some health issues, uh, the Republicans without Trump would actually have a better chance, I think, against a Kamala Harris or against any of the others that would come forward. Uh, and it also depends on how close to the election that would happen. I mean, if that happens now or in the next few months or in the next year, that gives the Democrats the time to pick a candidate and 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 move forward. If it happens, you know, three weeks before the election, that that's that's problematic on many fronts. So it's we're really we're really doing a lot of. It's conjecture yeah, at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are different hypotheticals, but uh, that, that I think that's such an interesting point you guys are making. Uh, I see the uh, cultural cleavage that they're trying to get going in more and more and they're attaching wokeness and reference to woke in more and more places i mean even in in their budget i mean or in discussions of the budget they talk about wokeness they're mostly in disparaging the the budget from the democrats and the biden administration they talk about wokeness um my question is something's happened with the democrats they are steering into the skid a little bit they're kind of they're talking about wokeness they mention woke, and they uh in doing it begin to take sort of the teeth the bite out of it. I, it this is my sense of it and i'm wondering how effective you feel it is to kind of go after these cultural wedge issues but to keep attaching the sort of the woke libs to everything michael shore well, I mean, it's it's from the Republican playbook to come up with a wedge issue or a wedge, um, I guess, language for an election. It's served them well in the past. It works. Uh, so I don't blame them for going with it. And it actually seems to have some resonance. Uh, even, you know, you know, if you label people as woke and it, it has a negative uh, connotation to many independents and many, uh, certainly many Republicans. Uh, I guess it's it's too early to say about independents, but it hasn't pulled well uh, when they hear somebody is woke, even though nobody can define this elusive term. Uh, but what it, you know, it's an us versus them thing, and when there's an us versus them, the Republicans have succeeded, but not in an enduring way. I mean, gay marriage was was the woke of, of a time. Uh, you know, the, the wall, in essence, is both a figurative and a literal um, uh, divider and, and wedge. And and so, you know, build the wall became something that, that people could recite. And uh, so I, it has worked for them in the past. I don't know how much it can endure because I don't know when there's something that is, is so nebulous that People don't even know what it means. It becomes it becomes difficult. But for now, it's a four letter word that the Republicans are are deploying, and I think probably to good effect. Jim, I, I think I think that Democrats have to do a better job of defining what the anti woke sentiment is, and what it is exactly. is racism. Yeah, that's right. And it's racism, and it's uh, it, it 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 is also against. Uh, gays and uh, and trans people, it's hate. And what the Democrats need to do is define that. Not so much worry about defining what wokeism is, but defining what anti-wokeism is. Uh, what they're even saying with these with the bank issue, 
what the Republicans are saying is that because some of these banks had to use diversity, that the banks failed. That's racism. What they're saying is because blacks were involved or brought into the process or gays were brought into the process, the banks failed. That is hiding racism. And that is what the, de- the Democrats need to point out, is that this whole wokeism baloney is, uh, is their effort to shield and to, and to use a code word for racism. Uh, yeah, so and calling it a wedge issue is is really is is really uh, diluting what it is. Jim's right. I mean, all these wedge issues are about other us versus them, the other, the other, the other, and and you know uh, to to be uh, to be blunt about it, it's always about somebody who doesn't look like you. Uh, it doesn't. It's always about the or doesn't you know have the 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 sexual proclivities of the majority of of people in America, and so by by targeting those people, what you're doing is you're galvanizing other people around that who think that they are, there's an oddness to it or a strangeness to it. They're, they're trying to get people to subtly agree with what they're saying. It's the, the old Bradley effect thing. When Tom Bradley as a black man ran for governor of California, everybody in polls said they were going to vote for him. They went into the booth and they couldn't. Well, if you've got this thing stuck in your head that you find you know, a gay lifestyle abhorrent or even slightly distasteful, and you're looking between those two, that's what the Republicans are playing on. But it's racism. That's exactly what it is at at its bottom line. And the the other trap here is what the Democrats need to do, in my opinion, is not get wound up in this debate about wokeism, other than to define it, what it really is. But the Democrats need to stay on their issues which are popular, which are pro-choice, uh, which are e- income equality, which are making the, uh, the rich people pay their fair of th- share of taxes, providing a, a, a safety net for Americans and not being cruel to those who are poor and, and in poverty. If the, Amer- if the Democrats stay on policy, their policies are much more popular uh, than the Republican policies. Um, and that's and so they need to you know not as Michael says this is these are wedge issues that are distractions and and not get caught up in that. And I would argue that the abortion thing you know I would say there's still uh, Roe v. Wade is still overturned. If I'm a Democrat, I'm talking about that all the time. I'm also well, it's talking- beyond Roe v. Yeah. Wade. They're going after medications yeah. that are associated exactly. with. Uh- in terms of putting it into the vernacular, in terms of putting okay. it into something yeah. that people can grasp onto, and I think what you know, uh, the 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 Roe decision, the Dobbs decision, in the midterms was such a powerful thing, but so was student loan debt, the student loan uh, yep. relief. And I think it was sort of the the un, the the you know the underappreciated player in that election, and I don't think the Democrats should let go of that either, because that's something that younger, newer voters are going to glom onto as well. And you're looking now and seeing that you know the average uh, American uh, is carrying forty thousand, average college uh, student loan debt is forty thousand dollars, and that's a tremendous amount of money for someone entering uh, the workforce. So uh, again, I think the, the what, what Jim's saying is right. That Democrats, if I were uh, you know, running the show, keep talking about those things. It's interesting that uh, we have one, uh, here you go, the top 100,000 taxpayers in California, for example, pay 40% of the California state income taxes. This is about uh, taxes for, you know, if you're voting uh, just to get tax relief as a, a higher income individual, as a higher earner, uh, then you you lean GOP. That I think that's reflected in that latest comment. I don't know that versus some of these things to which you've referred, you guys, uh, that that quite has what um, uh, has the uh, political horsepower that it might have in the past. You you don't think paying your fair share of taxes is a popular uh, a popular way to to get things done? I I, I think paying your fair share of taxes is very, very popular. So you think you think people are angry. Yeah, you'd say that, that you you, you th- that it's clear that that the the highest echelons of earners don't pay, and you're saying you can beat that drum and you can get you can get political horsepower out of it. Yeah, and Bernie Sanders. 
Bernie Sanders got that in two consecutive campaigns. So I, I think you can. I don't think it's everybody's number one issue, but I certainly think it's an issue that that uh, that unites a, a big number of Americans and a, you know a majority of Americans. I guess I, see, I think it's the, the root yeah. of our issues too. You know, I've made this point before: is that income inequality is the fundamental problem that we have in this country that is causing a lot of the other issues and that you have to attack that and i think biden's biden's budget which provides a safety net provides um, things like uh, uh child care for women who can't go to work now because they have to stay home those type of things are very popular and they can only be paid for by making those people who make more than four hundred to five hundred thousand dollars a year pay their fair share of taxes, and I think there's so many people below that that number of four hundred to five hundred thousand dollars, much more, many more people than than make more than that. That yes, it's a popular issue. Yeah, I I, I think it's it's popular. I guess um, I guess I'm getting to the fact that as um, as realities go. Uh, when the Republicans had ownership of r real legislation, Senate, House, and the executive, they were able to get the tax cuts through, right? Uh, I don't know that the uh, Democrats will get ownership. Even when they had ownership, uh, they couldn't get that tax increase through, I wouldn't think. And I'm just wondering to what extent that really lands with those who really follow such things. The abortion thing the uh, the right for a woman's right to choose, a woman's uh, right to make decisions over her body. I think that lands cleanly. Um, but if you really look at the realities on taxes, I, I don't mean to get too caught in the weeds, but I just don't know that you're going to get any legislation yeah. through that's actually going to... People, have, people have also, uh, they're accustomed to that status quo, which is um, why why Sanders lost two consecutive Democratic primaries in my in my belief is, is that they're accustomed to that. And that's sort of the way of the world. And, and frankly, it's been the way of the world forever. Even though we're not royalists, we elected Donald Trump to the presidency, who has been the beneficiary of all those tax breaks for such a long time. So that's an argument against what Jim and I are saying. But but I think what what the point that Jim is making, and, and it comes out of the conversation about wokeism, is talk about the things that matter define what anti-wokeism is, as Jim said, but move past it. Don't be distracted by it and don't let them distract from the fact that, that abortion's illegal. Don't let them distract from the fact that, yeah, the, 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 the petroleum uh, industry gets uh, pays zero percent in taxes. When you say it that way, it resonates more. Talk about student loans, talk about the income inequality in a different way. But I, I think there is something to what you're saying, Mark, that people are just accustomed to this is the way it's always been. The rich get richer, and we just have to make sure that we can lift up those who aren't the rich. Yeah. And I think there's two Last things version. here, uh, Mark, and there's two things here. There's the reality and there's the political. So the reality may be that you're right, that they're going to have a hard time passing a, a tax increase on the rich. Maybe that's true. I'm not convinced of it. Maybe it's true. I'll give you that. But politically, that issue is strong and the and the Demo and it's a defining issue between what who the republicans are and who the democrats are and the, the democrats need to keep pounding it that they're for the rich we're for the masses we're for the middle class and they need to keep doing that that's my that's my point yeah i i think that's a very good point too uh gentlemen thank you um it was great to i i took uh, michael and jim out to lunch yesterday uh uh, Albert and Kim yeah. it was a kind of our, you know, we, we ran up the bill. We don't. We what? Did. And we and we talked about how we were going to run up the bill for the days leading up. The lunch was the anti climax to how much fun we had giving Mark. Uh, it is true. That, that, yeah, that, I told the them they could good. order anything they wanted from the appetizer portion of the menu, and uh, we get of course the nothing. Made, yes. In the rich <laughs> tradition of this show, you got just a little better than nothing. I uh, love seeing you guys here great. on Fridays. Uh, thanks. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, sorry about uh, your Mark's madness. It's not over, though, until it's over. So, over. Uh, we're, we're doing great. We're both tied. Uh, <laughs> nobody's afraid of Snyder. Yeah. Uh, and we're fine.
The celebrity yeah. bracket, the contributor bracket is way live. So uh, good luck. Avil and Shore, everybody. Thanks, guys. Love it, love it, love it. Hi, it's Mark, and I thought that was great. Hit the notification bell. You'll know whenever there's a new video being dropped, and please subscribe to our channel to help us save the universe.